Hey guys, how's it going? So, uh, this video is going to be about catalysts. Um, catalysts versus intermediates. Uh, they're, they can seem similar, but they're very, very different. Um, so, this is going to be the last lecture in the unit, um, which means that we're going to have an exam coming up. Um, if you're part of the class of, you know, 2020 2021 then uh you know look for another video kind of going about it if you're not if you're from the future hi how are you welcome from welcome all right uh so let's get into this let's look at this reaction here um two hydrogen peroxide goes to two water plus oxygen all right and we have a proposed mechanism here we have a couple of steps. Uh, this is going to be our first step, second step, third step, and so on and so forth. All right. Um, my question first is, what are the intermediates here? So remember, intermediates are something that is created and then destroyed uh, or used up, I should say. Uh, so we have OH. One of these is created and used up. Another is created and used up. And what else? This hydrogen dioxide uh, is created and then used up. And everything else is good. We have one, two hydrogen peroxides, one, two waters, and one O2. And so there you go. This is a good example of um, a, a mechanism which happens. Um, this is a, uh, and has intermediates. So far, so good. Nothing we haven't seen before, right? Now, here's the thing. Um, I'm sure you guys have seen uh, me go through and do this. In fact, this is one of those types of reactions uh, that I video. Uh, you can look, go back and look at. Basically, look for hydrogen peroxide, and then I add something to it. Uh, I used potassium permanganate, but you can use lots of things. Um, some people use iodine uh, for that. And it speeds up the reaction. Uh, and that's exactly what a catalyst does. It speeds up the reaction, but it's not actually part of the overall reaction. So what does that mean? Well, let me show you the same overall reaction here. Two hydrogen, uh, uh, two hydrogen peroxides goes to two waters and O2. But the difference is, is that we're going to include some iodine ions iodide ions into this mix as well so now we have a different mechanism going on now the h2o2 can uh can interact with the iodide ion to form water and uh what is this hypoiodite and yeah hypoiodite um ion and then an additional H2O2 uh, interacts with the hypoiodite to form water, O2, and that original iodine, uh, iodide ion. All right, so let's kind of go through and do what we did for. Where are the intermediates? Well, this hypoiodite is created and used up, so this is my intermediate. And if you go through and you try and sum these together, we see that the original, this iodide ion here and here is uh, going to get canceled as well. But remember what I said, that a, that a uh, intermediate is something that is created and then used up. I made a very strong point of that. Um, this isn't being created then used up. It was there to begin with, used up, and then reformed. So that's what a catalyst is. Something that is there at the beginning, you have inter it probably becomes an intermediate or something, and then gets used up, or I'm sorry, gets, uh, gets recreated at the end. So again, this if you were to sum these steps together, it is, does get crossed out. But it's something that was there, and then gets recreated, okay? 
That's what a catalyst is. Now, why does this speed up the reaction? Uh, well, it can be a, a couple of different reasons. The big reason here is that it gives it a different reaction mechanism. So before, without the catalyst, this was the reaction mechanism. This is the reaction mechanism with the catalyst. Now, uh, I don't know the actual numbers on these, but, but we, we could imagine that uh, these have uh, fairly small k's. It makes the rate very, very small. Um, so it's a very slow reaction. This, the slow step, probably has a very large k, making the reaction go very fast. So um, that is what's going on. Now, what does this look like in terms of energy profiles? So as far as energy profiles go, um, we kind of have two separate paths. We have this path, which is kind of that original mechanism. It has a very large activation complex. And you can imagine that all of these guys up here, all of these transition states up here are something. When you have a catalyst though, it has a different transition state. And that transition state may be more stable, have less potential energy than this transition state up here. So uh, this is what a catalyzed reaction looks like. What you're doing is lowering that activation complex. Or perhaps you're making it to where the uh, those steric hindrances, the orientation of the uh, molecules are, um, are, you know, put up just the right way. Uh, there are some biological catalysts called enzymes. Uh, if you have taken uh, AP Bio, you'll know all about enzymes. Uh, or if you haven't taken it, this is you'll you'll learn a lot about enzymes. Uh, which literally, that's kind of what they do. Uh, enzymes will hold a molecule in place. That way its orientation is just right with another molecule and it makes them kiss pretty much like a little girl sticking two doll heads together. Um, essentially, that's what an enzyme does. Uh, another thing an enzyme could do, a uh, way that it can lower this activation energy is give it a place to, to you know, um uh, let i should say how can i put this um hold on to some electrons for them uh, usually whenever you're uh doing a reaction like this it's usually like making a bond or breaking a bond um and, and when you do that sometimes electrons need to be held somewhere i need to put these electrons somewhere for a moment um and then grab them back uh that is something that uh, catalysts also can do. Um, the If you go through and look here, I would imagine that's what's happening here. What uh, Think about it this way. What is happening here If you in terms of redox? You have something that is 1 minus here and something that is 2 minus needs to equal 1. So this is 1 plus. This iodine is one plus. So this thing is losing electrons. It's being oxidized. Uh, and again, redox reactions are about moving electrons around. Uh, and that's exactly what's kind of happening here is that we're kind of moving electrons around, making a more stable complex. Uh, you know, hypoiodite is probably a much more stable intermediate than uh, like OH gas or O uh, this, this looks crazy. HO2, uh, what would that look like? Something like this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, uh, six, six, we need two more. Yeah, something like this? Ugh, that just looks awful. Um, 
hopefully uh, you, you guys are used to this uh, looking at molecules by now to realize that that looks weird, right? Uh, so this is probably a very unstable intermediate. This is going to have a very high potential energy. That makes this really high. Uh, whereas this hypoiodite, uh, you know, it's one of your polyatomic ions. It's something that you've seen before. So that's how catalysts work. Um, yep. Go through, make sure and do those topic questions, uh, get, finish them out. Uh, and I will see you guys later.